Hello once again, everyone. Welcome back to King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. Well, since we're playing King's Quest, you know what that means. It's time again for me to complain about recording problems that I've been having. Uh, so, since I made my last video, I discovered that uh, in the Open Broadcaster software recording program that I'm using, if you set up a window capture to capture from a window, which is how I've been recording this game, there is a button in the lower left of that configuration uh, window called um, set base resolution. Actually, hold on, let me see if I can... Can I bring that up? Yes, I can. Uh, so, down here in the lower left... Well, you can't see it because my mouse cursor is not displayed, but uh, there's a button in the lower left that says set base resolution. If you click on that button while the uh, the window that you're recording from, you can see here I'm recording from Kegs32, the GS simulator. If you click on the set base resolution button while the window is open, that will set this this uh, window's resolution as the resolution that the software tries to record at. I could have just clicked that one button and saved myself all the trouble with fiddling around with uh, with screen sizes and things like that. So now we get the actual full screen Apple II GS experience, including that authentic blue border around the screen, which actually did appear. If you actually had an Apple II GS, it actually did show a colored border around the side of the screen, which I think you can customize, actually. Uh, if I go back to the control panel for just a sec, display, um, yeah, border. You can set it to whatever you want. So uh, let's go ahead and set it to a nice, ooh, aquamarine. Wow, that is beautiful. Let's go ahead and be really wild and avant-garde. Ladies and gentlemen, let's play King's Quest with an aquamarine border. Wow, this this is exciting. This is... I, I, I almost... I almost have to cry. This is this is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. This is awesome. This is this is see this is from when Apple still made good computers, when you could actually do things with Apple computers. It's too bad they stopped in in the nineties, but back then, wow, they really made great computers. Okay. Anyway, so talking about the game, uh, of course we are supposed to guess the gnome's name, and as I explained in the last video, if you take Rumpelstiltskin and flip it around with a backwards alphabet so that A becomes Z or Z, B becomes Y, C becomes X, etc., then the gnome's... What? Um... Uh-oh, it's one of my... I think one of my meta keys is stuck... There we go, that's better. Uh, then the gnome's name becomes Ifinkov Grochberm. That's right! You've guessed it! Here are some magic beans for your outstanding accomplishment. Uh, so that's it. And instead of a key, we get these beans. Being careful that you get every uh, that you get every one of them, you place the beans in your pocket. One thing I should mention, um, just in case anybody is curious. Uh, they did fix this puzzle for the remake. So a few years after this original version of King's Quest came out, they did publish a, uh, a remake using SCI, the Sierra Creative Interpreter, which went on to power most of Sierra's uh, best-known adventures in the early 1990s. And uh, in that remake, I guess they realized that this puzzle is not reasonable. I think Roberta Williams must have realized that nobody... Really, nobody is ever going to figure out this puzzle. It's just, it's, there's a difference between a challenging puzzle and something that's just really crazy pants insane. And so they just thought, you know, that's, that's not reasonable. Nobody's ever going to figure out. I mean, flipping Rumblestiltskin around and typing Rumblestiltskin backwards, that I can see. Somebody might be able to figure that out and guess that. That's, that's a reasonable puzzle to, um, to expect somebody to be able to figure out. But flipping it with a backwards alphabet, that's just stupid. And so they corrected that in the remake. Uh, in the SCI remake of King's Quest 1, the gnome's name is just Rumpelstiltskin backwards, not Ifenkofe Grochberm. Okay, that said, um... Oh, I did also want to show off, um, because remember I was talking about how uh, Sierra tried to make puzzles uh, so difficult sometimes that you had to get the hint book? I remember also when I was young, uh, and we noticed at the bottom there's this option to, to get a hint book for a hint book call this phone number, which I'm pretty sure doesn't work anymore. I was really just bowled over by that idea when I was a kid. I, I, I remember when I was a child, I despaired of ever being able to solve this game. I sometimes thought, will I ever, ever in my life be able to, to figure out King's Quest? Maybe the mysteries of this game are a mystery that I'll take with me to the grave. These are the fears of a six-year-old child. Uh, and then when I saw, oh, you can buy a hint booklet, that was like, um, that was like, wow, you can, 
you can buy the Holy Grail by calling this phone number. It was it, it was awesome. It was like the answer to all my all my hopes and dreams. Anyway, so uh, and, and we did in fact get the hint booklet. I remember uh, we actually my family did buy the hint book for this game because uh, there were some things that we weren't able to figure out without it. Of course, like the gnome's name, for example. So. Um, now that we have the beans, we need to plant them, and there are two places you can do so. This is one of them. This is my preferred place to do so. I'm going to go ahead and save here just for a sec. Uh, so this is my preferred place to plant the beans, uh, and basically what you're looking for is this patch of sort of fertile-looking ground with flowers growing out of it. That Im the flowers, I guess, imply that it is fertile ground that can support growing things. Uh, so this is my preferred place to do it. There is one other place in the game where you can plant the beans, and that is uh, just to the right of the back of the woodcutter's house, uh, which is not this screen, but the next screen to the right. Uh, those of you who have really been paying attention might know why I don't like to use the next screen. So here's the other place where you can plant the beans, and again you have this patch of ground with the flowers growing out of it. However, you might recognize this screen as the one where the ogre shows up. Now, whether enemies like the ogre and so on show up appears to be pretty much random. You have pretty much a 50-50 chance of them showing up. Right now the ogre's not here, so I could plant the beans here and just uh, go on a merry way. But I'd prefer not to... yeah. I would prefer not to plant them in a screen where an enemy can show up, because that just adds more complications. That just makes even more trouble. And the beans already give you plenty of trouble, as you are about to see. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is the worst part of King's Quest. We need to plant the beans here. The beans immediately sprout roots that reach deep into the fertile soil. Leaves unfold themselves to the warm, loving sun. A rumbling is felt, and a mighty beanstalk now stretches up into the sky. This is very obviously Jack and the Beanstalk. So, uh, what we need to do, of course, is climb the Beanstalk. Now, the gnome's name, the, the, the puzzle with the gnome's name is the hardest thing to figure out. That is the hardest puzzle to figure out the solution for in this game. But uh, climbing the Beanstalk is the single diffic most difficult sort of manual task, if you will, in King's Quest. On this very first screen, uh, it looks like you might want to go to the left, but you don't. You actually just press up. Just go straight up and you'll be able to make it to the second screen here. After this, however, it's a total... It's pretty much a total uh, matter of luck. Like, for example, why was that a wrong move? It says, with a wrong move, you fall dizzyingly to the ground. How is that a wrong move? What did I do wrong? And, of course, you die. If you, if you fall off the beanstalk, then you die. So, I guess... Whoops. So, at first it seems pretty much random where you can climb and where you can't. I, like, okay, how is that a wrong move? Why, why did I... Ah, wow. Some people have theorized that there's something to do with where Graham's hands are. Like, you say that... Some people say that you, you need to keep both of Graham's hands on top of the actual green part of the beanstalk so that his, one of his hands isn't floating in the air. But I don't think that's perfectly true, because um, I'm pretty sure that in the situation I was just in, uh, yeah, like, see, his hands are still on the beanstalk, so what do you, need, do you need to keep his hands and feet on the beanstalk? I don't think that's practically possible. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I really don't know what you're expected to do here. You just I think it's pretty much just trial and error. So obviously I can't go straight up from there. Uh, and, oh, I can't go right for, Whoops. Um, can't go right from there. Do we need to go left from there? Yeah, okay, look at this. This is ridiculous. Here, I'm not falling off, even though Graham's whole left half is is hanging off the beanstalk, and he's basically holding on with one hand. But when I had both hands on the beanstalk, then that was a wrong move when you fall dizzyingly to the ground. Wow, how, how, could, you, how could you do that? Uh, okay, this is getting just stupid. Look, look at this. Seriously. Look at that. He He's... He's holding on with, like, one hand. His feet are dangling in the air, and his left hand is just dangling uselessly. But still, this is okay. Oh, this this is, uh, this is not bad. This is, uh... He's, he's hanging on here. Okay, and then at that point, I guess I need to move to the right. Okay, here we go. Now I can go up from here. This is... Yeah, I don't really know why they, uh why they did this the way they did. I mean, there are some things about King's Quest that are kind of, okay, you know, you can kind of say, well, adventure games were still in their immaturity back then, and 
And yeah, some of the some of the puzzles are a little bit simplistic. Some of the ways that they think about things are maybe okay, whatever. But but this this is just like wow. You have to be careful when you get so high on the foliage. Well, I am being careful, but it's kind of like what, what do you want me to do? I don't I don't know where I'm supposed to go or what I can do. I really don't. Like look at this. What? Why is he not falling off now? There he fell off. Okay, so do I? So if I fall off, if I go to the left, I fall off, if I go to the right. What am I supposed to do? Wow. Wow. Oh, and now he just suddenly somehow goes behind that that stalk, and now he's okay. Now he can climb on the on the back stalk there, even though. Yeah. This is. Wow. Yeah. This really is. Wow. No words. I have no words. Well, obviously I do since I'm still talking, but I, it just... Ah, uh, okay. And, and I was almost there. I was almost at the top of the screen, and, and just suddenly knocked, it knocked me off and said, Oh, you have to be careful when you get so high up, because, you know, the game might just decide that you... I guess it's kind of like the Tower of Babel. It's kind of like... Uh, you you became you just you just go, went so high up that the game just decided oh you need to be struck down you just can't can't get that high okay and at that point you can just go straight up and now uh, we are on the clouds now we are in the land of the clouds and from here we can just go straight to the right we were here in the last video because the beanstalk wasn't there so now we can uh, we can go ahead and take care of our business so um, just to the right of here is the giant. But before we go there, I want to go ahead and loop around a little bit. I really swore uh, when I was a kid, this is very strange vegetation, the fact that they took the trouble to draw those red uh, dots on the tree, I really, really thought as a kid what must have been some kind of sign that you're supposed to pick the fruit off the tree or something like that. Um, which is how adventure games work, actually. Usually when in an adventure game they take the trouble to... Um, draw something like that explicitly it, it usually is an indication that you need to do something with it but in this case it's not so in this game uh, uh in this room which we haven't seen before uh okay it doesn't tell you very much but uh you might notice in the in this tree there's a sort of a split at the bottom and yeah, its trunk has a large hole in the base and if you look in the hole you notice a sling in the hole of the tree so if we get this sling reach into the hole and pull out the leather sling so now we have a sling, which was made by a fine craftsman, or craftswoman, maybe. Uh, and you might remember we have pe pebbles, which we picked up by the uh, by the side of the river. And you can walk up from here. It's not very intuitive that you can walk up from here, even though, yeah, it, it doesn't look like you can walk up from there, but you can. And we're back here. We're here at the at the mouth of the cave where we came up the stairs from. So, as you can probably imagine. We have a situation where there's a huge giant just to the left of here, and we have a slingshot and some pebbles. And I just did that to show that uh, I did basically what exactly what I did in the previous screen, except that in the previous screen I could go up from there, whereas in this screen I cannot. Oops, you've missed the edge and fallen through the clouds. Uh, so, this is another uh, fairy... T well, I guess it's not technically a fairy tale. Um, this is an allusion to the story of David and Goliath, where um, David killed uh, Goliath with a um, with a slingshot shot to the head. <clears throat> now, because I have the shield, actually, all I have to do is just uh, stand. I don't have to do anything. But if you um, want to take the most direct route, what you can do is kill the giant. And to do that, you type use sling. You put the pebble in the sling, take careful aim, and luckily hit the giant in the forehead. He falls down dead. Uh, and there we go. Now, now we can just pick up his magic chest. Um, another story of my, another riveting story of my family playing this game. When I was a kid, my grandmother and I couldn't figure out what you were supposed to type because uh, in uh, so in the Bible, which is where the story of David and Goliath originates. Um, I think that um, the Bible says David slung his sling, and so we were trying to figure out what noun, uh, not noun, what verb do you use with the sling? Uh, so we, we, we said, wait, do you, do you type slung sling? The game doesn't recognize slung. Um, slung sounds like, I believe it's probably a past participle of, of the verb sling, and so you can say 
sling sling, except the game doesn't actually understand that because I don't think the game is smart enough to realize that sling is both a verb and a noun. It's just using the ver um, the it's just using sling as the noun for the inventory item. So we never figured out what verb you use, even though it's as simple as use. Just typing use sling is all you have to do. But uh, I don't think that. Uh, I don't think my grandmother ever figured that out, even though it's the most simple and most obvious verb to use, because because uh, usually these adventure games don't like that. Usually adventure games don't let you just, quote, use something. You have to use a more explicit verb than that, but no. What you can also do, uh, the way that we figured, the way that we solved this puzzle when I was a kid was with the, the magic ring. Remember, we have the... Are we still... Okay. So if you wear the ring and then rub the ring, we turn invisible. And then the giant won't see you, and you can just kind of, uh, yeah, you can actually walk into him, but it just says the giant cannot see you since you are invisible. And so now we can just uh, let him walk around. Um, so those are a couple of ways of approaching the giant. You can kill him with a sling, you can rub the ring to become invisible and then stay hidden from him. Um, the other thing you can just do is just avoid him and just walk around, and I think if you get behind that tree somehow, you might be able to prevent him from touching you, although it's pretty difficult to do. But in this case, it's very easy. I have the shield, so I can just basically just walk up to the giant, and he can't hurt me because I'm protected with the magic shield. So what we need to do here is uh, just um, wait, actually. We just wait until he falls asleep. So now that he's He's basically given up on trying to chase us because he realizes that he can't hurt us. He just walks around ponderously until uh, until he gets tired and falls asleep. So we just we just stand here. You literally just stand here and wait until eventually someday. What luck! The huge giant fell fast asleep, and it even plays snoring sound effects for him. And now we can get the chest. Very carefully, you slip the magic chest from the sleeping giant's arms. Okay, and um, there we go. We got the chest. And let's go ahead and save the game here. And actually, I believe that now... You know what? I'm not sure, but I think that we can go down here... And, um, you know, I'm not sure if we can do this because, uh, because in theory, intuitively you'd think that that door should be locked at the bottom. Uh, remember we opened the door at the bottom with a key, which we don't have because we actually guessed the gnome's name correctly, and so instead of giving us the key that we need, he gave us those beans. Uh... Part of me seems to recall that for some reason you can open the door from the inside if you're already inside. Uh, if I'm wrong, then I'll just have to... Uh, I'll just have to restore and go back down the beanstalk. Nope, you can actually... you can go out that way. It's perfectly... Uh, perfectly okay. Uh, so, good. That is... Hold on. I feel like I'm missing a couple of points. I'm just looking at my score because... Uh, so our score is currently... 153 out of 158, so I'm missing five points. One thing I also didn't show is if you fall off these stairs, you die. Oops, these stairs are pretty slippery, aren't they? You know what? Um, I'm wondering where I might be missing... Two. I, th I feel like I'm missing two points. So I know that if we go back to the castle now, we have the three treasures. We have the mirror, we have the um, shield, and we have the uh, chest. So we have the three treasures. We're ready to win the game. If we go back to the castle and greet King, Ed King Edward now, uh, we will win the game. Um, and I know that if we go back and see him again... Um, if I bow to him again, I'll get three points for that, because you get three points for bowing to him the first time, and three points for bowing to him the second time. That allows me to get my score up to 156. Um, but I appear to still be missing two points from somewhere. I'm wondering, do you get two points for, for climbing back down the beanstalk? I don't think that you do, but I could be wrong, and I don't want to... Uh, 
I don't want to miss two points on account of a presumption, so I'll go back down this way. And if I still don't get the two points at the bottom, then I will go ahead and... Uh, I will go ahead and... Uh, come on. Then I will go ahead and pull up a points list. Because I really, uh, I really am kind of OCD that way. And that, well, it's not really OCD necessarily. It's not like a, like it's not like I can't live with myself if I don't get the full score. But I, I would like to show how to get the full points in the game. As it is, there's a strange sort of, I think it's a glitch. I don't know if it's a glitch or or whatever in the game that um, causes you to get two points if you go back into the well after um, after the dragon's cave. I think you saw that when I... I think I showed that. I think I did do that when I was in the dragon's cave. For some reason, you get two points for, uh, for going back into the well. And I think I actually was able to do that twice, which is kind of bizarre. I don't know if that is intentional or if that's some sort of a glitch with the game. Um, one thing I, I think I did miss was deliberately filling the... Uh, oh. You don't actually die if you uh, if you fall off the beanstalk on that first screen. Uh, but let's go ahead and properly get Graham down to the ground so he doesn't have to make the cuckoo clock sound. There we go. And I did not get two points for climbing the beanstalk back down, so actually I could have just gone down the stairs and saved myself some trouble. Uh, well... Now I am a little bit despondent because I know that I'm missing two points from somewhere. I know that I will get three points for bowing to King Edward, but uh, let me go ahead and very quickly, since I have an internet connection here, let me go ahead and quickly look up a points list online and see what I might be missing. Uh, let's see now. Do, 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 do. I am just... That whole thing with the bowl still weirds me out. The fact that apparently you can uh, fill the bowl without reading it and then allegedly get two points for yeah for filling it without reading it. That's kind of... I have to, I have to be honest, I think that's kind of stupid, but... Um, let's see. Still... Still... Still going through the points list. Um... Uh, yeah... Ah, I did all of this. I think I did everything. But for some reason... I appear to be... Missing something. That is kind of disconcerting. Um, I am pretty sure on the off chance that somehow um, I can still redeem myself and get two points by filling the bucket. I'm going to try that. Uh, what if I just say throw water now? Can I get... No, I can't get rid of the water now. Um, let me try... Let me try... Um, going down the well one more time. And see, can I climb the rope from here? Like maybe if I spell it correctly. Yes, I can. Okay, good. Let's go ahead and fall down here. And fill the bucket. Oh, I need to press equal sign of swim. Okay, now fill bucket. No, because I already have... I already have the water in the bucket. And I don't have any way to... As far as I know, I don't have any way to drain it out. 
And if I come in here and then go back into the well, I don't think I'll be able to get points a third time. No. I think maybe I'm missing the points because I because uh, I didn't fill the bucket. I didn't type fill bucket in the well. I just let it fill up naturally. So I think that's probably what I did wrong. Okay. I'm not going to... I'm not going to make too big a deal out of it. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure I did everything else in the game that will uh, that will get you points. So uh, it's time to go back to the uh, to the castle. So let's make our way back to the castle where we will meet King Edward and uh, tell him of our great success that we uh, managed to acquire the uh, the treasures that he commissioned us to get. So the castle is not too far, it's just a couple of screens to the right from uh, from here. And where is the, uh, where is the fairy godmother? There's a fairy godmother in this game who will... Uh, who will cast a protective spell on you for a while. Here we go, here's the castle. Since I'm here, uh, and I think the fairy godmother is not too far away, let me go ahead and quickly just save my game and show the fairy godmother. I believe she is to the right of this carrot patch. So if we go here and then go right again... In the PC version of this game, you can speed up Graham uh, to as fast as your PC will allow him to walk, but in this version, his walking speed is a little bit limited. So this is the screen where the fairy godmother shows up. Uh, she does not appear to be here right now, but maybe if I leave the screen and come back... There we go. Gentle Sir Graham, I am your fairy godmother. Your quest is indeed noble. My small part to aid you can be no bigger than this magic spell. Protective, but for a little while. And she kind of dances around and waves her wand, and I guess that is meant to cast a spell on us. And so now that we have the spell, I will be watching over you, Sir Graham. And so that protects us in pretty much the same way as the magic shield. That protects us from getting hurt by enemies like the ogre and the wolf and the giant and so on. So you can also make use of that. Uh, it lasts for only a few minutes, but if you're quick, you can also use that. But um, as you can see, it's not needed because I never needed to make use of it. It's just a convenience in case you uh, don't have the shield yet or aren't quite sure of what's... Uh, or in case you run into some kind of unexpected danger. It doesn't make you invincible. It won't protect you if you fall into this moat, for example, or something like that. At least I don't think so, but anyway. All right, let's go ahead and end the game. Ladies and gentlemen, let's return to the castle and go up here and to the left here. And now let's go ahead and bow one more time. When you bow to King Edward, his pleased smile warms you. Oh, I actually got, uh, I got four points for that. Oh, 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 I, uh, I got a point for opening the castle doors again, I think. So again, another point for opening the castle doors, and then another three points for, um, yeah, for bowing to the king again. So, okay, so I'm missing one point. Um, how am I missing one point? That, um, that really, that really bowls me over, but okay, whatever. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. You move aside as the king steps from his throne. As you approach the throne, the king himself rises to commend you for a job well done. Oh! Oh! The king proclaims in pain. From the seemingly lifeless king, you hear these words. Well done, Sir Graham. You have been a good and faithful servant. Your reward is well deserved. My kingdom is now yours. With those words, King Edward the Benevolent dies. The experiences of your quest will be invaluable to you as you begin your reign as King of Daventry. Thank you for playing King's Quest from Ken Roberta Williams and Saul Ackerman, Chris Iden. Um, this does not tell you the roles of all these people. 
Um, most of these people did not achieve much greater fame. Of course, Mark Crow went on to become uh, one of the two guys from Andromeda who designed the Space Quest games. Um, most, of the, most of these other people are unfortunately not as well known, but thank you to all these people who made King's Quest. And um, it looks like they didn't even bother to have a funeral. They didn't bother to inter or have any kind of funeral for King Edward. His corpse just disappeared. He literally, his dead body just disappeared, and Graham just takes the throne. And that's it. That's the end of the game. And the same music plays as we saw in the game's opening credits. And that's it. And there's nothing you can do. You can't even type. You cannot even type parser commands at this point. There is nothing to do except just stare at Graham, just kind of sitting majestically on his throne, looking into space. Who is he even going to govern? This kingdom has no people in it except... Uh, I think the only people we saw were the woodcutter and his wife. That's it. Graham is governing a kingdom of two people who are about to die because they, uh, they're they going to starve to death because they... Didn't, they never figured out how to use the bowl that he gave them. Graham's just going to sit here until the end of time and just sit on his throne and and just feel all cool with himself because he found the three treasures. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, that was King's Quest, Quest for the Crown. Uh, of course, this game did go on to spawn one of the most famous and most successful adventure game uh, series in history. Um, it went up to, I think eight games, as well as, uh, of course, there are several fan games, like the relatively recently released The Silver Lining and things like that, but uh, but yeah, King's Quest went all the way up to King's Quest Seven, and then there was an eighth game called Mask of Eternity, which was basically more of an action game than an arcade game. Uh, so yeah, this is where it all started. This is the game that very much uh, defined the, uh, the 3D animated adventure game for uh, for about a decade, or close to a decade. Uh, and I am just realizing that, unfortunately, my, my window uh, resolution appears to have captured the toolbar and the status bar at the bottom of the screen, which is not really bad, but I would have preferred to omit those from the video. So, so this Let's Play has been a great success in most respects, I think, except that I missed a point for some reason because of some silliness on my part. And I think every single video has been uh, somehow derailed by some quirks or gotchas in the way that I'm recording the emulator that I'm using. So other than some technical difficulties, which, uh, which I've probably made a mountain uh, of a molehill out of, uh, I hope that you, that you folks have enjoyed watching me play King's Quest. Uh, I very much have enjoyed this game. It is... Uh, a lot of people don't like King's Quest for various reasons, but I really like this game. Um, a lot of people say that LucasArts games are better, but, um, well, I don't want to be too partisan. I don't want to say bad things about LucasArts because I know a lot of people do like LucasArts, but um, I'll go ahead and just inject my opinion, my personal sort of feeling that I didn't like most LucasArts games because they're very Hollywoodized. They focus too much on goofy sort of things, which... Um, are the kind of gags that you get from Saturday morning cartoons, which are fine if you like that kind of thing, but um, they, to me, they don't really feel like stuff that belongs in a computer game. I mean, a computer game is something that you play, it's not something that you watch. And LucasArts games are always too full of their cinematics and their cutscenes and things like that, which um, I'm frankly not into. I actually prefer a game like this, which is all about gameplay. There's not much fanfare, there's not, there's really nothing, there's almost nothing in the way of cutscenes in this game. There's not a lot of dialogue, there's just pure gameplay. You just, you go, and you adventure, and you pick up things, and you solve puzzles, and you do stuff. That's, that's, uh, honestly, that's my kind of game. That's what I like in a, in a, uh, in a computer game. I actually am usually turned off by adventure games that have too much dialogue and too much story. Um, so that's, that's me. That's my personal take on it, and that's that's why I prefer Sierra Adventures to LucasArts Adventures, even though I, I know a lot of people say the opposite. A lot of people say that Sierra Adventures were technically inferior. Um, but to each their own. You folks have your preferences, and I have mine, and that's what makes life exciting. A lot of choices and a lot of 
variety and a lot of uh, diversity sometimes. Okay, folks, uh, thank you once again for watching. I will talk to you all in a future video, uh, but for now it is time to say bye-bye.